We're dinking around with Eddie and Webby. Dinking around with Eddie and Webby tonight. Oh, yeah. And cut. Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie, and this is our 62nd Dinkin' Around. Oh yeah, episode number 62. Yes, this is our third installment of our new format that I'm absolutely loving. And honestly, Webby, I don't know about you, but I'm getting great feedback about this new format. Yeah, I have too. A lot of people are really liking the new format. I'm really liking the new format. I dig it. Well, this new format wouldn't be made possible if it wasn't for our friends over at Valer Pickleball. We're so happy to be partnered up with Valer. Guys, if you want to get your hands on some of the best pickleball paddles out there and plenty of other good pickleball gear, head over to Valer.com and use coupon code PB for life to get what, Webby? You will get 10% off your order. That's right. Not only are you going to get some great pickleball stuff with 10% off, you're also going to help out the channel, and we definitely appreciate that. Yes, very much so. But Eddie, I don't want to waste any time. I've got a question for you. What in the world is in that drink? What you got in that drink? That's right. What's in that drink? Webby, why don't we start with you tonight? What are you drinking, homie? Well, this is something that I had for the very first time ever at last year's Beer City Open. And this is from our friends at Griffin Claw Brewing Company. And this is a blood orange vodka and soda. And this is very light and refreshing and tasty. And I'll be sipping on that with my Eddie and Webby pint glass. Oh, I like that. I remember, yeah, we uh, we drank quite a few of those last year. In fact, I think I still have some hidden in my fridge or buried deep in my fridge from uh, from last summer's Beer City Open, and I liked them a lot. Yeah, I liked it a lot. But uh, what about you? What's in your drink? Well, here's the thing. I'm not a big fan of blood, so I'm just <laughs> going to go with regular orange spiked hard oh, cool. seltzer from our friends over at fort myers brewing company last episode i had their cherry limeade which is delicious i like it a little bit better than orange but the orange is really good it's very refreshing zero carbs zero sugar 90 calories guys if you're in florida check out fort myers brewing company you can get 12 packs of spiked at Publix, all over the place or you can get it right at the brewery and it's very delicious i'm a big fan of it nice well cheers eddie and cheers to everybody tuning in today cheers Mm. Mm. so good very good well now that we have uh we've wet our whistles webby what time is it now it's time for memes of the week yeah that's right it's time for the hottest segment in all of pickleball podcasting memes of the week and today is pretty exciting because we're going to start off with a meme that was actually sent to us from somebody that tuned into the previous episode this one comes from brandon serbo aka at Ernie King PB on Instagram. So Yola recently announced that they have uh, some new paddles, new color variants out there. And some people might remember a certain show called Captain Planet. So basically, when all the pro players with their designated color paddles combine, then you can possibly make Captain Planet show up, just like in this meme. This calls for a team beam and fast. Let our powers combine. Earth. I love it. So good. Nicely done there. Thank you for sending it. And uh, one very interesting thing, our good friends over at Memes of Pickleball, they did a post that was kind of similar, but they had a different approach on it. And they said, knew the new Yola Paddle launch video looked familiar. <laughs> and it shows uh, anybody who's got kids that are about the same age as my kids, they would watch the Disney Channel and there was the promo where the kids had the different colored magic wands and they would form the the Disney logo or the Mickey Mouse ears. And yes, it <laughs> looks very similar to the, uh, the commercial shown with the Yola Pickleball Pros with their new different colored paddles. So it's kind of cool that like two different meme creators, they had a similar idea, but a totally different approach. And both of them are very relatable and very well done. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Now, I'm not familiar with this one just because I was probably a little bit too old when this Disney Channel promo ran. But what I will say, Webby, is that this tells me that whoever the creator of Memes of Pickleball is, is either young enough to have watched this themselves or is old enough to have children or, yeah. you know, or maybe nieces and nephews or whatever that would watch it. So 
I don't know. I think we might have gained a little bit insight into narrowing down who the real creator of Memes of Pickleball is. Yep. Good call. Good call. Some clues here about the true identity of Memes of Pickleball. <laughs> I love it. Webby, that's great that we were able to get a viewer submitted meme and then another follow up one. But what is the meme that you picked for this week? All right, so I took a little bit of a different approach for the meme I chose this week. I went to an account known as Eddie and Webby on Instagram. <laughs> That's right. This is something that we actually posted back in September. And it's kind of related to some of the memes that we went over last week. And those were memes that were involving Tyson McGuffin and Tyler Lung. There was a little incident that happened back in September. And a lot of people thought Tyson McGuffin was uh, showing some poor sportsmanship with some choice words and some gestures towards Tyler Lung. But we got some enhanced footage that showed like what really went down, what was really sad, and I think we should go ahead and play that right now. Good game, Tyson. Thank you so much. A thank you. Thanks. Oh, and don't forget, it's Frank's birthday. I got him a birthday gift. What'd you get him? A fondue party, <laughs> free cake, your beef stew souffle, and spicy pizza. <laughs> we like to party. See, so I feel like I feel like it wasn't that bad. I mean, I feel I feel like people totally took that out of proportion. It's almost like the mainstream media wanted to blow that up and make it seem like it was worse than it was. I it didn't sound that bad to me what Tyson said to Tyler. What about no, you? He's, he's giving him the peace sign. It's boys will be boys, <laughs> just hanging out. Yeah, I mean, at the end, Tyler was showing how much he respects Tyson by doing that on the court, like he's bowing to him. I mean, yeah, it seemed yeah. it seemed all good. Yeah, and Tyson was inviting him to a party. It sounded like a really fun party that that he had planned there. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the problem was, but apparently that was one of the sources of the beef between those two. And here we are today. They can't be on the same MLP team because of it. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? But uh, what about you, Eddie? What kind of memes do you bring to the table today? Well, Webby, were you watching the uh, PPA Houston? I don't know what they were calling it, uh, but PPA Houston. It was a couple weeks ago. Did you watch the broadcast at all? I did watch some of it. I did. Well, there was some technical issues going on here, and uh, well, let's just say that the feed just kind of dropped in the middle of the uh, of the broadcast to uh, Pickleball TV. So our friends over at Memes of Pickleball basically said. If the PPA was in charge of broadcasting the Masters, and I don't know if you guys remember this, this was, I think, 2005, Tiger Woods with one of the most historic putts of all time from like 20 yards off the green. And I mean, it's just, he, he nails it. It, it curves, it's heading towards the hole, the drama's building, it's slowing down, you see the Nike logo on the ball, it's about to drop in, is it gonna go in, is it not? Oh, and it cuts right to a PPA scene. <laughs> 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 oh man <laughs> it's so it's so good because we've all seen these uh these ppa promos that they play on pickleball tv and, and they're great i'm not like they really are well done and they're good tips and tricks but when you're about to get to the good stuff and that's what comes up <laughs> it's quite frustrating yeah the the timing of the placement of some of those was not great <laughs> definitely not well guys those were the memes of the week if you have a meme that you want us to review or you want to share with us, please go ahead and do so. Easiest way is probably on Instagram at Eddie and Webby. And just like the Ernie King did on this episode, we're going to feature it. We're going to be able to give you a shout out. That's right. That was very fun. But Eddie, I think it's time. Now it's time for Topics of the Week. That's right. It's Topics of the Week. And this week, we're actually going to do what we set out for when we originally created this format a couple episodes ago, where each of us are going to pick a topic. We're going to talk about it. But really, what we want to be able to do with these topics is get your opinions as well. So if you want to throw it down in the comments below, you want to be able to tag us on social media and be able to have a conversation around it. That's ultimately what we're trying to get to. But this is just the perspective of Webby and I with these topics. Right, Webby? That's right, and I think we should kick it off with whatever topic you want to talk about today. So what is that? Well, Webby, this is going to be a little bit controversial. Uh-oh. And yeah, it is. And really, I'm asking a question. And okay. this question is, should Naples, Florida still be considered the pickleball capital of the world? We just got done having the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships here in, in Naples at East Naples Community Park. 
which I believe is still the largest public pickleball facility in the country with 64 courts. And it was great. And it's fantastic. And I love it. And it brings the community together. It brings people from all over the world into one place. It's really cool. It's always been very special to me. And it's very special to people here. However, that's really just one thing that happens throughout the year where there's other parts of the country where there are things constantly going on and other uh, maybe areas to look at that make it more appealing for pickleball. So Webby, I guess I want to start with you. What are your thoughts on this question here I'm proposing? Oh man, I feel like that is a, a pretty big one. It could, could be very controversial to some people because I know there's going to be a lot of purists out there that want Naples to just remain as the pickleball capital of the country. But Man, I don't know, because I, I do feel like a lot of other cities and states throughout the country have really upped their game, and I almost feel like m more is going on in other parts of the country these days to where I, I'm not so sure. I don't, I don't know if Naples is really the hotbed of pickleball anymore like it used to be. It definitely used to be, but I feel like you, you might know better because you're actually there. Uh, so you know what, what the scene is like down there. I don't really leave the Midwest too much, so I feel like I can't really say too much. I definitely think there is a good argument there to possibly crown a different city as the new pickleball capital of the country, but what, what are your thoughts about it? Well, I mean, I think there's a bunch of different aspects to this, right? There's access to pro players. There's how many major tournaments are there in the area. Um, there's how many people play, uh, you know, play recreationally. Uh, there's how many, uh, e events in, in, in a community type of feel to it. So why don't we go through each of those a little bit? Let's first start with the fact that outside of the U S open, why is there not an APP PPA or MLP event ever taking place at East Naples community park, the largest public park with pickleball courts in America and the home of the U S open. Why? What, what, what is the, what could possibly be the reason that, that these organizations aren't taking advantage of Naples, the pickleball capital of the world in 64 freaking courts to be able to use. I mean, that it's crazy to me to think that they're not taking advantage of that. Do you know why? One thing that comes to mind, I don't know if this is the case, but could it be the, like, could there be something in place to where the people that own that facility like only want the u.s open to take place there that way like that one event is like a big grand special event each year have you heard anything like that i haven't and honestly that could very well be true and if that's the case that's another reason why i'm questioning is it really the pickleball capital of the world why are we not trying to get all of these other events to be able to come i mean ken herman was there at the u.s open uh last year he was there again this year so I just, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is, but I think that's a huge miss. The second thing I wanted to bring up is access to pros. So there are some local pros and there are some local top pros. Uh, however, that number seems to be going down. A lot of people that maybe came here years ago who probably wanted to get access to playing with like Kyle Yates and Simone, a lot of them have left the area and they're no longer here. So you really don't have a ton of top, top pros that are in this area. And actually, Webby, I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say you are an aspiring pro, or let's say you're somebody that you're right there and you want to be able to level up your game and you want to have access to high, high level play. Which part of the country are you likely to move to right now? Well, I keep hearing that a lot of the top pros are currently in Austin, Texas. So I feel like that's where, that's where I would want to go because if I know a majority of the top pros are there. I'm I'm going to want to go there. Yeah, Austin, Texas, uh the the greater Phoenix area, obviously we're seeing a huge swarm of players going there. You got a big pocket in like the Los Angeles area. And I mean that's that's a a big area surrounding Los Angeles, the Pacific Northwest. I don't know. I would likely say that those areas are going to get you access to the top top pros and the high high level play more than you would likely have access to down here in Naples. So let's go to the next thing, and that's regarding kind of having a pickleball community. Now, Webby, you remember back in the day, I used to live stream the Johnny Pickleball show up, up at East Naples a lot, and there were a ton of big names in the sport that used to oh, be yeah. able to come to that. And we used to pack that place. 
I also live streamed King of the Court. I feel like when you had Johnny Pickleball at East Naples, when you had Simone at East Naples a long, long time ago, when you had Michelle Esquivel and Rob Cassidy at East Naples, they used to put on these events and they used to draw local pros and even some pros that from hours away used to come and there used to be tons of people there watching these events. Since Michelle and Rob have left, I have not seen one event come through that I would have been interested to be able to go and watch. There's been some clinics and things like that, but it wasn't the same type of incredible pickleball that we used to see back in the day. Why is that? I definitely agree. I feel like things like it, it isn't as big of a hotbed as it used to be. I definitely don't have as much interest in things that are going on there. Just from like a spectator's point, like point of view from watching stuff from across the country, I feel like not a whole lot goes on throughout the year in that area anymore like it used to. So yeah, I just uh, it, it's kind of sad to see, but I, I, I agree that it, it isn't as, uh, as great as it once was. I agree. And, and the last thing I want to bring up is the recreational play. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I have to imagine that between East Naples, Veterans Park, and all of the private courts that are in different communities throughout Naples, we probably do have, if not the highest percentage of, of courts or, or recreational players compared to the population of the country, it's got to be up there. So I do have to say that that part is, is pretty strong. So closing, I ask you the question, you guys tuning in right now, should Naples still be considered the pickleball capital of the world? Jury's out for me. It sounds like same with you, Webby. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'd be very curious to see what you guys think. That's a great question. Great topic. For my topic, it's not going to be quite as in-depth, but it's been something that I have cared a lot more about lately than I used to, and that is the topic of eye protection when it comes to pickleball. I feel like a lot more people are starting to wear eye protection. And there's a lot of people that actually think it should be mandatory that people wear eye protection. So I'm curious to know what you think about that. Like, should it be mandatory? Uh, do you think it's a necessity these days with how fast the game is getting? Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I think it's smart to have protective eyewear. I'll fully admit when I'm playing indoors or at night, I typically don't. And I probably should. I definitely am always wearing sunglasses, though, during the day most of the time. But it's to me, it's not a matter of should I or not. I think the question you asked is, should you be forced to? Well, I got to tell you, there's a lot more injuries that happen on the pickleball court with people falling backwards and hitting their head on the ground. So should they be required to wear helmets? There's a lot of people that fall and break their wrists. Should they be required to wear wrist guards? Where do we draw that line between what you're required to have to do versus what is highly encouraged? And that's my question is, where's that line for you, Webby? Yeah, and I I definitely think people should be encouraged to wear eye protection, but I do not think it should be mandatory. And even in my case, like I wanted to wear eye protection for like a couple of years ago, I tried wearing eye protection. And no matter what type of eye protection I bought, if it said it was fogless, it everything that I wear Every would fog up because I sweat so much. <laughs> I was gonna say and, it's it's the, the the people they tested on probably don't sweat nearly as much yeah. as you do. Yeah. So for me, like I I really really wanted to wear eye protection, but it it has gotten so bad I can't even wear sunglasses when I play outdoors anymore because it'll they'll fall those will fog up or the my sweat like drips on the lens and then as soon as I try to like wipe the sweat off the lens it's just like it's done for because my shirt just won't wipe the sweat off the lens properly to where my vision isn't good. So then I got to take my sunglasses off. And then because I was used to playing with the sunglasses on for like the first few games, it, it really messes with me a lot to all of a sudden for like not to have sunglasses on after playing for a few games with the sunglasses on. So it like really messed with me bad. So even when I play outdoors, I don't wear sunglasses anymore because I just want to make sure that my vision isn't skewed in any way. I want to, I want to be able to see everything good. I want my reaction time to be good. Um, but what I did start doing is I bought glasses and I popped the lenses out. Mm -hmm. And that way, there's no chance of them fogging up. Don't have to worry about my sweat getting on the lens. But that works great. I've been wearing them pretty much every time I play for the last couple months to where now I feel weird if I don't have my glasses on. Yeah. So I'm glad that I'm finally 
at that point. Uh, but you do have to find glasses that are good for you because they're like what what's good for me might not be good for you and stuff like that. Um, so I think it's a good idea to do it because I've been seeing more and more people getting eye injuries, like really nasty ones, like even young people. Cause like some people might think, Oh, like I'm, I'm young. My, my reflexes are fine. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I know a lot of younger people like in their twenties that have had really bad eye injuries. And a lot of times it's not the opponent hitting the ball towards your face and hitting you that way. A big majority of the times I've seen people get injured, the ball like bounces off their own paddle and hits up or off their partner's paddle. And if it goes off your partner's paddle, you have no control over that. So it's, it's weird freak things happen with the ball. And it, I feel like the ball is just, it gravitates towards people's faces near the eyes and stuff like that. So I don't want to be the type of person that waits until I get injured and then starts wearing eye protection. I know so many people that are in that boat where they got injured, then started wearing eye protection. So I'm proactive. I'm currently wearing eye protection. I definitely suggest everybody try it. But I still do not think it should be mandatory. I do think that should be a choice that everybody has. Do you, is, is there anything that you think should be mandatory that isn't right now? In regards to like protection when it comes to playing pickleball? Anything. Like I definitely think that it should be uh, mandatory uh, that my partner and I like tell jokes while we're playing. <laughs> so that's something I would really like. Um, I think it's mandatory that um, you enjoy a beverage with pickleball. But those are just my thoughts. Something I do, like in all seriousness, think is that it should be mandatory that you're having fun when you play pickleball. If it's not fun for you, stop playing pickleball. <laughs> just like it's got to be fun. I know, like some people are super, super competitive, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm very competitive, but if if you're not having fun in any way, if it's if it's just all business, if you if you're just if you take it so seriously that like you just can't have fun while doing it, I feel like maybe find a different sport. Oh, really? <laughs> yes really <laughs> I agree <laughs> guys those are our thoughts but we want to know what are your thoughts on this topic just like Webby I want to know from you how do you like to stay hydrated while playing pickleball well I love to drink Jigsaw Health Electrolyte Supreme I like the fruit punch flavor I drink a bottle before I start playing pickleball and then I drink another bottle towards the end of my playing session and it helps big time I've had dehydration issues in the past but thanks to Jigsaw I am in really good shape. Well, that's great to hear. I got to tell you guys, Jigsaw Health is a great company. They're full of people who are addicted to pickleball and they have some incredible products that are going to keep you hydrated out of the pickleball court and plenty of other products as well that are going to help you feel good because at Jigsaw Health, it's fun to feel good. And it's also fun to be able to save $10, which if you go to jigsawhealth.com and you use the coupon code PB for life 10, you will get $10 off your order. And you'll be able to get your hands on some pickleball cocktail, electrolyte supreme, mag soothe, a whole bunch of different products that are going to keep you feeling good. We definitely highly recommend it. Again, that's jigsawhealth.com and coupon code what, Webby? PB for life 10. That's right. Check it out. And now I think it's time for closing thoughts. That's right. It's closing thoughts. And what did we learn tonight? We learned a lot of great stuff. First of all, we learned that Webby likes blood and I don't because he's drinking a blood orange seltzer and I'm just drinking an orange one. We also learned that Yola is really capturing the uh, late 90s, early 2000s with their new promotional materials like Captain Planet as well as what was it? The Disney Channel Webby. Was that what that was? Yep, the Disney promo. We also learned that Tyson McGuffin and Tyler Loong they might not like each other, but it really all came from what you saw tonight as a very pleasant exchange and not a nasty one like a lot of people are thinking. We also saw that if the PPA was in charge of broadcasting, they would cut to a PPA promo at probably the most critical time during an event. We asked the question, is Naples still worthy of being pickleball capital of the world? And we talked about protective eyewear and why you should really consider it, but we don't recommend that it's made mandatory. Did I miss anything else with my uh, with my conclusion there, Webby? No, I think that was a great conclusion. I think this was another great and fun episode, and thank you all for tuning in. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. Yeah. Well, we're taking around with Eddie and Webby. Around with Eddie and Webby.
with Betty and Webby tonight. Oh, yeah.